Remote Procedure Calling. So aims and objectives for this session are to understand the concepts of remote procedure calling and web services. To be able to describe some different methods of doing remote procedure calls. To understand the problems of so-called screen scraping. And to know how to write code using urllib.request. Part 1. What is remote procedure calling? Well, the idea is very simple. Remote procedure calling allows you to access tools and data and essentially the functionality of some application that's living on a remote computer by accessing it over the network. And it does that using standard internet technologies. So why are we interested in doing it? Well, first of all, distributing the load between multiple computers, allowing you to access other people's methods, and allowing you to access the latest data. So just as an example, we have a number of databases for example, um, the most recent one being a database of zinc binding sites. And we provide a web service that allows people to access the data in the database and some prediction software using code written on their own computer to access those facilities that live on our web server. Now, there are a number of different ways of performing remote procedure calling. The first is what we refer to as screen scraping, and that's essentially just writing some code that can download an HTML page and scrape the data out of it. The second is what's known as REST, and that's really just providing a CGI script which, instead of returning data in HTML, returns data in some sort of simple text format that is easy to parse and easy to extract information from. The third possibility is to write custom code to work across networks and for the majority of purposes this really is overkill. And the fourth method is to use what we refer to as standardised methods such as GraphQL, SOAP, CORBA or XML RPC. Now, as I implied a little earlier, remote procedure calling methods that work across the internet are often referred to as web services. And there's an awful lot of technology that's available behind web services, and this allows them to be self describing. So there's a language called WSDL uh, which allows a web service to describe what functionality it has and how to call it. In other words, it describes its own API. And web services can also provide methods for discovery. In other words, like a directory of services. However, in the main, they're not done like that these days. This was kind of a, a, a desire that people had uh, for making web services really pervasive uh, and because it was rather complicated it never really caught on in the way that it might have done. So we're going to end that short introduction at that point and in part two we're going to go on to describe the process of screen scraping. <laughs>